Piano Man is back, playing It Is Well With My Soul. I can deal with it. Hopefully you can hear this one. But we'll talk about math. So slope has real world applications. It's everywhere, even if you don't recognize it. For example, the grade of a road. We live in the mountains. It's a measure of how steep a road on a hill or a mountain is. So a 3% grade means what? For every horizontal distance of 100 feet, it would help if I took the cap off, every horizontal distance of 100 feet, the road rises 3 feet. So you have a little picture given to you. The road grade is A over B. Again, the rise, the height over the run, the horizontal distance. So Dubai Ski Resort has the fifth longest indoor ski run in the world. It drops 197 feet over a horizontal distance of 1,297 feet. We want to find the grade of the ski run. So at what rate is it decreasing? So I like to draw a little picture. It's generally helpful for me. So we're in, inside in Dubai. And I'm gonna go skiing. So here I am, here's my poles, here's my skis. Beautiful, I know. Should have gone to art school. And we know two pieces of information. It drops 197 feet. So the height, 197 feet. Over the horizontal distance of 1,297 feet. So again, I have the relationship of rise over run. So we can figure out the slope. So we're talking about the vertical distance over the horizontal. Or again, the rise over the run. So what is our vertical distance? We rise 197 feet all the way up to the top. As you're skiing down, you cover the horizontal distance of 1,297 feet. Okay. So we need it as a percentage, so if we do the division, it comes out approximately 2.15. So what does that mean? We are talking about a 15% grade. Not so bad, so one for you to try. During a stress test, a physician can change the grade or slope of a treadmill to measure its effect on heart rate, steeper, higher heart rate. Find the grade of the treadmill shown below. So vertical distance, 0.4 feet. Horizontal, 5, if you don't have it in front of you. So what are we looking at? Again, vertical over horizontal. So vertically, we are at 0.4 feet. Horizontally, the length of the treadmill is 5 feet. If you do the division, what are you looking at? 0.08. So what percent grade? 8 percent. Okay. So slopes can also be considered as a rate of change. Rate of change. So instead of changing distance over distance, we could say rate of change over time. And it's a very practical application. So we're going to look at two of those. Cameron, a supervisor, he is a supervisor in a car assembly plant. He prepared the following graph to display data from a recent day's work. Use the graph to determine the slope or the rate of change of the number of cars that came off an assembly line with respect to time. So what is their production rate? How fast are they pumping out these cars? So the rate of change is what we're looking at. The slope means the same thing. Rate of change, just to hammer it in. Again, we're looking for difference between the y's over difference between the x's. So later in the day, we produce more cars. So we'll start with that point first. So my output, my y coordinate in this case, is cars. My x is with respect to time. So, later in the day, specifically 4 p.m., how many cars did we produce? 252. 
And earlier in the day, 10 a.m., how many did they make? They had 84 cars pumping out. So the difference between the times is the time that's passed. So from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., six hours had passed. And the difference between the number of cars was 168. Okay. But does that really give us a rate per hour? No. If you're going to go to your boss and say, we make 168 cars per six hours, it's not very to the point and takes a little bit of thinking. So we want to kind of unitize this and make it cars per one hour. So if we do the division, what are we talking about? 28 cars per hour. So now that it's in that rate of change form, my production rate, you could say, hey, how many cars am I going to make in two hours? Multiply it by two. Easier to work with. So one last thing for you to try. Print newspaper advertising rev revenue has been decreasing since 2005. It makes sense because everything's going digital. We want to use the following graph to determine the rate of change in the advertising revenue with respect to time. So just looking at the picture, it's decreasing, which makes sense. They're losing money as time goes on because everything is going digital. So I'm going to start in 2010. What was the revenue? 22.8 um, billion dollars. And in the beginning, 2005, we were looking at 47.4 billion dollars. That's substantial. Okay. And we were looking between 2005 and 2010. So, difference between the revenues, we're looking at negative. 24.6, and five years had passed. So if we do the division, what did you get around? Negative 4.9 per year. And again, we want to give units on this rate of change. So we're talking about money, but it's not $4.9 that they're losing. They're losing $4.9 billion per year. So, slope is super important. It has applications in the real world, and we can also think about it as a rate of change.